Ladies and gentlemen, Tunaitaji mtu moja kutia tuombe. Nana aneza kutuombea? Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, we want to welcome you to Job Center. And perhaps before we start, we want to welcome one of our uh, bishops or pastors to come and open this sitting with the word of prayer. Uh, do we have a bishop in the house or uh, someone inspired to pray for us? Imatoa kwa wapi? Tafadhali njo utufungulie kikawa chetu kwa maombi. Okay, let's pray. Our kind and loving master in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this chance of life that you've given to us. We also thank you for our party principles, to our party leader, to our president, to the Republic of Kenya. That our president as he speaks to us before us this day, may you bless him, may you give him good health, and bless all of us. In the journey we are, God, we ask for your guidance. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. Uh, thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen of the press, uh, we are very uh, grateful that you could come at very short notice to join us here uh, for a formal statement from the Azmio leadership with regard to what happened in Kenya yesterday. And as you know, it did not just happen in Kenya only. We had demonstrations also in South Africa. Uh, the only difference is that in South Africa, the demonstrations were fairly peaceful. The police were escorting the demonstrators peacefully. But here, the demonstrators were met with brutal force. And as a result, there was loss of life. We lost two lives. We have injuries, we have those who are in police cells, we have those who have been taken to court. And before I invite our leader to speak to the nation, I would like to request all of you to be upstanding to observe one minute of silence for those Kenyans who left us yesterday. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated, and I take this opportunity to welcome the Right Honorable Raila Molodinga to make the statement on behalf of Azmio. Thank you. Welcome, Your Excellency.
members of the Fourth Estate, honorable members of Parliament, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have a, a statement that I'm going to read on behalf of the leadership of our movement. And uh, I read, Brutal Ruto regime now exposed. Statement on the Monday protest march. Yesterday, we had a date with destiny that was immensely successful. We wish to take this early opportunity to thank our supporters and patriotic Kenyans who turned out in large numbers to salvage our country. Our country and our democracy are much stronger because of the unwavering resolve of these patriotic citizens of our country. We also wish to express our gratitude to the media who shone a light on the de demonstrations the whole day and the Kenyans were able to see that it is the police who are violent and inciting the violence. They also informed the international community about what was happening here in Kenya. Therefore, we thank you. Very unfortunately, during this otherwise peaceful process, many of the demonstrators got hurt and at least two innocent Kenyans were killed in cold blood by the police. We pass our sincere condolences to the families that lost loved ones in the, to the police brutality. We will stand with those families in all ways, including pursuing justice on behalf of their loved ones. We will ensure that all those responsible are held to account for the lives that were cut short and the pains of those who got injured. There was an attempt on the lives of both Honorable Rael Odinga and Honorable Kalonzo Musioka. Their cars were, were shot at, but luckily they were unharmed. We however remain horrified and disgusted by the response by the police. At a time the country is going through major security challenges in huge swaths of the country where bandits and other criminals appear to have taken charge, we were shocked that police could assemble so many personnel and so much equipment to confront peaceful protesters. That brutality witnessed yesterday does not belong to this country. It is the more, more disgusting because the citizens were acting within the provisions of the Constitution, we were given notice of the intention to march on Nairobi. It is impunity at its worst. We were, de we were determined to confront it as they saw yesterday. We demand the immediate and unconditional release of all our people who were arrested yesterday. We appeal to our supporters to show up and stand in solidarity with our compatriots who are being held wherever they are, including the courts. In this struggle, there is no big or small fighter. The police are clearly the last straw of Brutal Ruto. Ruto's greatest aspiration is to return Kenya to the old dictatorship, where is the unquestioned tyrant controlling everyone's life. While we condemn Ruto's brutality and the ruthlessness, 
we have come to the conclusion that our police shall never change unless we make them change. We therefore wish to make Kenyans know that we have put together a team of security and legal experts to examine the conduct and orders given by the police commanders to the officers on the streets that led to the brutality meted out yesterday. We shall institute legal action against individual officers who give such orders that led to the mayhem. In this regard, we decry the silence of the International Police Oversight Authority, sorry, Independent Police Oversight Authority, IPOA, and the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights on brutal Ruto's misuse of the police. We are going for individual responsibility and culpability against officers who acted against the Constitution. So far, we have a case to file individual charges against Mr. Adamson Bungay, the Nairobi police chief. We'll press these charges locally and internationally. We'll make Mr. Bungay and his enablers understand that the days when regimes could brutalize and butcher citizens with impunity are long gone. However, we commend those among the police who showed restraint in their actions and showed respect for the rights of their fellow Kenyans. We reiterate to our supporters and all patriotic Kenyans that this struggle is just starting. We are not looking back and we will not be intimidated. No retreat, no surrender. Our issues remain as follows, fellow Kenyans. Number one, cost of living. We will not relent until this illegitimate regime understands that the people are hurting and that their suffering must be at the center of our priorities as a nation. We will push on until the cost of food, fuel, electricity come down. Two, electoral justice. We will continue fighting the attempt to constitute a compliant electoral commission. Brutal Ruto must stop reconstituting the IBC unilaterally and packing it with his puppets without the involvement of other stakeholders. At the same time, we demand that the four commissioners who were forced to resign because they differed with Mr. Chebukati on the results must be reinstated. We maintain that IEBC must open the servers and allow an independent international audit that will without doubt prove to Kenyans that Brutal Ruto did not win the last elections. Three, inclusive government. Brutal Ruto must stop the ethnicization and the commercialization of the public service. We'll fight for as long as it takes to save this country from being ruled by cartels, elites, and ethnic warlords. We are determined to lead the fight for the inclusive government opportunities based on merit. Four, sucking of civil servants. Ruto must stop the victimization and sucking of civil servants 
whose only crime is either that they served in the previous government or that they come from particular communities. This politicization of the civil service is making career civil servants be outnumbered. It is killing professionalism and destroying the once proud civil service. We must protect our civil servants from these ills and particularly from tribal discrimination. Finally, fellow Kenyans, in the second phase of our protests and response to public demand, we shall now hold protests every Monday and every Thursday beginning next week. We call, we call for, secondly, we call for the boycott of Safaricom, Kenya Commercial Bank, and Radio Africa Media, particularly the Star newspaper, who have become enablers and facilitators of this brutal regime. <laughs> These corporates have become the enemies of the people and are benefiting. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. End of the statement. Netawezo kongeza kwa kifupi kwa Kiswahili. Kwanza, sisi kama wa Kenya. Uh, I'm just being reminded that I need to to emphasize uh, the final paragraph. And here I say, we call for the boycott of Safaricom, the Kenya Commercial Bank, and Radio Africa Media, particularly the Star newspaper, who have become enablers and facilitators of this brutal regime. We have the details why we are saying so, and our supporters will understand. Wacha niseme kwa muktasari kwa luga ya kiswahili, sisi kama wanazimio na movement for the defense of democracy, MDD, tunatoka kutoa shukurani kwa wa Kenya wote kutekia vitu wetu jana na kujitokeza kwa wengi kote katika nchi yetu na kufanya maandamano ya kiamani bila tuliyoitishia tunatoa shukrani sana pili tunatoa shukrani kwa vyombo vya habari ambaye vile vile waliangaza yale ambayo yalikuwa yanafanyika jana na kuonyesha wa Kenya kila kitu ambacho kilikuwa kinaendelea vile wa Kenya walijitokeza vile walikuwa wanaangamizwa na polisi lakini wa Kenya wengi ambao hawakuwako walitazama kwa runinga hata ulimwengu yote iliona yale yalikuwa yanafanyika hapa kwetu tatu nataka kutoa laana kwa polisi ambaye walitumikia kutumikiwa kwa njia mbaya kuangaisha wananchi na kutumia nguvu ilikuwa ambayo ilikuwa haina maana ambayo ilisababisha uh, vipo wa, wa Kenya wengine wawili na hata vile vile ikafanya wa Kenya wengi walipata wali, wali majeraha tulisema sisi tulitangaza wazi mapema ya kwamba tarehe 20 tutakuwa na maandamano na Nairobi na kwingineko na tukaarifu polisi tukatimu barua kwa mkurugenzi wa polisi yani inspector general pili hapa Nairobi tukaandika barua kwa bwana Bungei 
kumwarifu ya kwamba watu wetu watafanya maandamano ya kiamani jana. Kwa hivyo sisi tulifanya kulingana na sheria na katiba la nchi yetu. Lakini sisi tuluzinishwa na vitendo vya polisi. Walijitokeza kwa wingi. Tulishangaa ya kwamba wakati huu ambaye kuna shida eneo kuna nyinyi ya Kenya wa majambazi ambao wanaua wana na wanaua watu polisi wangekuja kwa wengi namna hiyo hapa Nairobi na walijaribu kuzuia watu wetu kwenda mahali walikuwa nataka waende na wasanyike pale kwa njia ya amani wakatumia vifaa vya eh, mambo ya ya kutawanya watu wakatumia pia vyombo vingine vya kupiga wananchi hovi hovi watu wakapata majeraha wengine walishiko kalala kwenye seli ya, ya polisi kuna eneo zingine wakapiga watu na risasi haya ni mambo mbaya sisi tulikuwa tunasimizazika kwenye kaburi la sahau. Kwa hiyo tunalaani polisi kuelewa wanafanya. Lakini tofauti na haya tunalaani bwana Ruto na serikali yake. Kwa ubaguzi ya kikabila ambao wanafanya kwa upande ya ajira ya watumishi wa umma. Wakati huu watumishi wa umma wanaajiriwa kwa msingi ya kikabila kuna wengine ambaye waliamua kufanya kazi yao kwa serikali na wamefanya kazi kwa muda mrefu zaidi sasa wanawachiswa kazi na wale wengine hata wana siasa ambayo waliwania viti na wakashindwa wanaletwa ndani ya serikali kufanya kazi hii inaleta chuki mingi mingoni ya wakenya inagawanyika gawanya wa Kenya kwa msingi ya kikabila ambayo sisi hatutaki kuona kama wazalendo wa Kenya. Ndiyo sababu tumesema yale madai yetu yote bado yamo. Tumesema gharama ya maisha mpaka irudi chini. Bei ya chakula mpaka irudi chini. Bei ya mafuta na bei ya stima kata ya shule mpaka irudi chini. Tumesema tuna tumekataa bwana Ruto na wenzake kuunda tume ya uchaguzi peke yao bila kushauriana na washikadau wengine kama sisi tatu tumesema ile nyungu pale matokeo ya uchaguzi ilipelekwa mpaka ifunguliwe yani saba bwana Ruto juzi anasema atio sisi tunasema ati sisi hatuheshimu IBC tunaheshimu eh wisu blower kupiga frimbi na polisi IBC ya, ya nani IBC ilikuwa na wanachama wa saba bwana Chebukati na wawili watu watatu ndio walileta matokeo ya kusema bwana Ruto alishinda wanne walikataa walipinga hiyo matemu IBC gani IBC ina wanachama saba na wengi walikataa matokeo bwana Chebukati sasa mpiga furimbi amejitokeza na akatoa wazi kinagobaga matokeo ambayo wakanya wote wamesoma ndio sababu tumesema tunataka tujue ukweli iko wapi ndio tumesema hiyo saba ifunguliwe wataalamu kutoka nje waaje wakague watueleze matokeo ilikuwa namna gani la sivyo atutatambua bwana Ruto Yo, sisi tumesema tunataka ukombozi mbeza kuambia wafasi wetu wote sisi tunataka kukomboa Kenya ili Kenya hiyo ya wakenya i Kenya hiyo serikali ambayo inaangalia maslahi ya Kenya wote kwa jumla bila ubaguzi upande hii upande lingine na hii 
e, mambo yetu itaendelea tumesema kuanzia wiki ijayo tutakuwa na mgomo na maandamano siku ya Jumatatu na siku ya Alhamisi ndiko ndio namna hiyo pili tumesema ati tutasusia makampuni zifuatayo kampuni ya kampuni ya Safaricom kampuni ya Kenya Commercial Bank na uh, tuo cha utangazaji cha um, Radio Africa aswata gazeti ya uh, Star manake ameonyesha kwamba wanalenga upande moja na sisi wanatu uh, 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 bagua kwa hivyo haya ni waamuzi uh, wetu tunaambia wafasi wetu wote wa azimio la umoja hata na watu wa MDD ya kwamba vita yanaendelea aluta continua sasa ningependa kama kuna swali kule ndugu Kalonzo atajibu nimeona endelea jina langu naitwa Duncan Haimba kutoka NTV ningeteka kujua idadi kamili ya wafuasi ambao wali naswa jana na polisi na kuhusiana na vyombo vya habari kwa upande mmoja umesema vile wajibika na kwa upande mwingine yaonekana ni kama there is attack against the media specifically the star newspaper and uh, don't you think that in itself is a danger to members of the fourth estate and then uh, the third question the double protests monday and thursday there are those who feel like it is going to do more harm than good maybe your take on that then can you umeuliza maswali kadha na kwamba tunaarifiwa kwamba zaidi wa wa Kenya wapatao zaidi ya mia mbili walinaswa kupelekwa korokoroni na kando na waheshimiwa kiongozi na minority minority leader kwa senate justice uh, mazayo stewart na minority leader katika national assembly opio wandai kambo na hawa kambo kando na hawa viongozi kunao wananchi wa kawaida ambao tunatoa tunaimiza kwanza lazima wao pia kwa sababu msukumo huu sio wa viongozi peke yao bali wa Kenya this is a Kenyan affair eh, swala la pili na wale ambao wameadhirika tunapata habari kwamba kijana William uh, William Abunga let me just be accurate um, ya William Mayange third year student at Maseno University was among those who were failed yesterday for no reasons at all in cold blood the excuse police wanapeana ni kwamba sijui alikuwa anataka kuvamia supermarket <laughs> maseno this sounds familiar and unacceptable kama vile aviosema ndugu Raila stories kama hizi ni za miaka ya kale we don't expect these stories under modern constitution 2010 swala so, lako la la pili na la tatu ni juu ya wananchi kususia kususia sio kufanya action against the media tuheshimu sana media na ndio katika eh, paragraph ya kutangulia aliyosoma mheshimiwa Raila alitoa eh, furaha yetu shukrani shukrani kwa media because you are part of this struggle clear indication but there may be those who probably think 
that we also don't have rights. We have a right kugomea, kugomea sio ku, <laughs> to act uh, in isolation or anything. Absolutely not. We, what we are saying is fair reporting. But if you take a position, then Kenyans have also a position to take a contrary opinion and not necessarily being in contravention or media freedom in which we believe. And as I say, this is the struggle is actually even media led. So while wa star newspaper wakitaka kujiunga na wakenya wanzao, we are not saying they come out and praise any leader, but let them be impartial. Because the freedom of expression, as we also recognize like other basic freedoms uh, under our constitution, also come with responsibilities. We have been very clear and very careful on the matter of responsibilities. This is why we stress peaceful demonstrations. And it is clear it's the police who came now to, to demonstrate contrary, using, you know, the freedom of, uh, of, of peaceful demonstration picketing, also coming as it does with the, the attendant also responsibilities. The police clearly chose to act against the Constitution by turning up an armed, when angel were unarmed, when I talk on a silaha. So they are the ones who acted in contravention. Now, if there's another, another question, maybe mother can take it. I hope I'm clear, Kaimba Duncan. Thank you. We, we are for the freedom of the media. Freedom of the press is absolutely to nepateke pao mbele. But we must also point out excesses. I think that is only fair. Thank you. My name is Jeff Kirui from KTN. Yeah, Kirui. Yes, I have two questions. One of them is their concerns that your supporters have been infiltrated by goons who are hell-bent on destruction of properties and looting. How are you going to address that? And then there is also the issue about the intention of the demonstration. One of uh, the reasons that was given was that we were going to march to State House. That did not happen on Monday yesterday. Is that still the intention next week, Monday and Thursday? Kiri, I think we'll ask uh, Mother to deal with that question. Yeah, Tafadali. I'm a maybe uh, any of my friends, uh, Kioni, Kioni, Mother, Kioni, uh, Malwa. Thank you. Yeah. I'm forgotten. how? Rudia Kiri. The first I've question. I've remembered. I've remembered. Oh. <laughs> You asked about goons. The goons are owned and hired by the government through their party, UDA. The moment you see people saying, because the other side has given a notice for demonstration, we have a counter demonstration. That's euphemism that we will meet you with goons. If you look at this last week, for more than four days, people demonstrated peacefully in Kisumu, in Migori, in various parts of the country. Even yesterday, the demonstrations in Kisumu were so peaceful, including taking a coffin to a police station, and the police were not rattled. Where the violence occurred, these were goons. And we noticed that in the previous two weeks, there was a, a center opened, which I take was a command center for Thuggery under the auspices of UDA office. Any serious investigator will see where that violence in Kisumu came from. It was not from our members. I would also want to say this. In any country where leadership accepts and practices democracy. Once a notice for demonstration is given, the police become facilitators, not obstructors. And in any period in this country, even before the passage of 2010 Constitution, I do recall times in government, demonstrators were escorted on horseback. No looting, no violence. Violence occurs where police go out on instructions to meet demonstrators with the use of unnecessary force. And that is what has happened. 
Protesters do not have a monopoly of instruments of violence. That remains with the law enforcement agencies. That's why we are commending the many police officers who showed restraint, but cautioning the ones who deliberately broke the law that we shall deal with them in accordance with the law. And we have given instructions to our lawyers. Now, the, I have again, the second one has disappeared. Can you quickly? The march to state house. May I say this? that uh, as citizens, and if you read the Constitution, we are entitled to march to any government premises. Government means our premises for which we fund with our taxes to present our petitions. Even State House is not exempted. Peacefully marching there and any self-respecting elected regime would not fear citizens. I thank you.